This video is not intended as medical advice and should not be relied upon as such. The video presents a trial method of killing larger Australian ticks in situ at the bite site. Be aware, due to a lack of peer-reviewed scientific study into best practice of tick management on humans, the information within this video is largely anecdotal. Some experts suggest this technique may minimise health risks, particularly anaphylaxis, as the tick saliva, containing various toxins and pathogens, might not be passed into the host, as it is when the tick is agitated through improper methods of treatment or removal. Serious tick-borne diseases and anaphylaxis can follow tick bite and tick removal. If you are at risk of anaphylaxis, attend your doctor or local hospital emergency department before disturbing the tick. Any reactions to a tick bite should immediately be reported to your doctor or hospital emergency department. Always phone triple zero to seek urgent help in Australia. Anaphylaxis should always be treated as an emergency. This is the Australian paralysis or shellback tick, our most troublesome tick. It is listed as an Australian native pest species and poses a significant health burden to people, pets and livestock. The method and timeliness of its management can have a significant influence on patient health outcomes. A tick needs three blood mills during its life cycle to complete the reproductive process. Bandicoots are the paralysis tick's primary host. Although ticks are not fussy eaters and have been known to dine on native fauna, including dingoes, wallabies, koalas, rodents, possums, birds, flying foxes and reptiles. They are also partial to introduced species including cats and dogs, livestock and of course humans. Once a tick has located a suitable bite site, it will inject a tiny mouthpiece known as the hypostome into the host's skin. It then feeds on blood and leaves the host when engorged. During the feeding process, or if disturbed, it can eject saliva into the skin. Tick saliva is a biochemist's delight, as it can contain neurotoxins, factors triggering allergic reactions, and a range of microscopic pathogens, causing disease. Ticks are associated with the transmission of several diseases. Australians have contracted these diseases, yet more research is required to better understand the Australian context. Conditions include tick paralysis, mammalian red meat allergy, tick typhus, tick-borne encephalitis, rickettsial spotted fever, Lyme disease, and allergic reaction. It is important to note that most tick bites do not result in disease or anaphylaxis. Many experts agree the best management of a tick bite is to safely kill the tick in situ as soon as it is discovered. It is unsafe to scratch, burn, drown, smother, squeeze or do anything that might irritate a tick, causing it to eject saliva into the host. An accepted practice to kill larger ticks is through the use of an ether-based freezing spray, such as those used to treat warts and skin tags. They are available over the counter from many larger pharmacies. Here is a demonstration. Place the nozzle over the tick and spray once directly onto the skin. A second spray can be applied, but the user should know that ether is dispensed at about minus 30 degrees centigrade and excessive use, especially on tender areas, might sting and cause frostburn. Ether is highly flammable and should only be used in a well-ventilated area away from heat sources. Otherwise, it is listed as a relatively safe product to be using in this context and appears to be deadly to ticks. Anecdotal evidence stated by a consultant physician in allergic disease is that freezing a tick in situ is extremely effective in the reduction of tick-initiated anaphylactic shock, which can occur following the forceful removal of a tick. Remember, tweezers are squeezers. Never ignore the risks of anaphylaxis. Please see the comments section for articles explaining how to handle large infestations of smaller larval ticks and other tick-related information. This short clip shows a living Australian paralysis tick being treated to a single dose of dimethyl ether spray available from the chemist. 
Its immediate effect is obvious, and the tick did not recover. Experts offer varying advice as to whether the tick should be removed after it is killed in situ. Although unpleasant, a dead tick left in situ will dry out and fall away from the skin. Removal using tweezers or other devices may cause unnecessary salivary injection, which could lead to anaphylactic shock. Conversely, leaving the tick in the skin may result in infection or the further transmission of pathogens leading to disease. A lack of Australian peer-reviewed research addressing the removal of ticks from human hosts requires that expert opinions should guide treatment. This production is my attempt to present those opinions for the broad benefit of improving sustainable health outcomes for people exposed to tick bites. This video is intended to be general in nature and based upon advice received in conversation with experts and readings of various research papers. Please see the YouTube footer for links to various resources providing more information on ticks. I wish to offer a sincere thanks to the following people for giving me time from their busy days to help me research this subject and to explain their views on the subject to me. If this video is endorsed by Askia, Tiara or any other peak body, then that endorsement will be noted below. Until then, please assume this video is not endorsed by any peak body, medical or entomological professionals.